I'm cooking some tutorials about AABB and some calculations using the visual mesh to make those cool rectangles on sci-fi games, I just noticed that Godot 4.4 Beta 1 has been released. And there has been some uh, huge changes here that I think are very much well worth mentioning. So even though Godot 4.4 Beta 1 has been released, now they managed to squeeze some new features that I think are very much important to talk about. So let's go through them. So the first one that I think is huge and some people on some other developers here on YouTube have also commented that this was missing from Unity side of things. So people that have come from Unity were accustomed to run the game inside on your side the embedded window. So now it's actually possible to do so. Whenever we run the game, you have the option to run inside of the window. And I already tested this and it is pretty cool. And I also think it speeds up development because you don't have to mess up with the window position all the time. And you also see on the screen relatively fast the changes you make. So yeah, this is some pretty important changes that everyone was wanting to have that I think is going to improve Godot a lot. So now your game should be able to run in better windows inside of your testing scenes, which is pretty cool. And now we also have shader instance uniform for the 2D side of things. This is huge. You don't have an idea how this is important. Whenever you want to make a shader and you want to specify different attributes for different instances of an object, you can also you can do that. So here, for instance, all of these four fog texture shaders are being have their color changed by setting the instance shader parameters. So normally, if you want to do this inside of Godot, you had to duplicate the shader and do some and change the things you wanted. So they would be different from one another. Now that we have the instance shader parameters, we can actually change the parameters inside of each instance. This allows you to do a lot more things and while also has some batching features. So this does not increase the performance cost. This is not nothing like you duplicating the shader. This is actually you reusing the shader with different parameters, which is awesome. And this in back when I had some 2D projects were going to be pretty cool. But I have in mind some things that we can do with this with some interface effects that is going to be quite useful to have instant shady parameters. And while here on the example is just changing the color, you can say, well, I can simply change the modulation to do the same effect. The instance shader parameters can be anything that the shader is defined, like textures, noise. So yeah, pretty cool stuff that we can actually use Then it's going to help a lot on the 2D side of things. Oh yeah, props to the guys because this is very much interesting to have. There's also some improvements on the emission shapes, which allows you to see the visualization of 3D emission shapes, which is pretty good. There's also some changes for the AGX tone mapping, and this, and this has to do with the brightness levels and the color levels. So yeah, this in turn is going to make your renders look a little more realistic. There's also transparent support for Lightmap GI, which is also something very interesting. And here goes the breaking changes. We now have implemented the universal YG support that I've talked about. And if you don't know, you should read this post here on the Godot blog. There's a post about the UID changes, which I talked about on the previous video, but here they go into more details of how that is going to impact your project. And I think this is also pretty interesting. One cool thing is that you can now preload resources with the UID. So you don't have to worry about the path of a resource. You can simply use the UID. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff that you should get the time to read about. They also suggest that you duplicate your project to run this because this is going to change a lot on your resource files. There's also a big requirement for CSG mesh 3D. Basically now forces you to have manifold meshes, which basically means that when you are creating or generating new meshes with the CSG mesh 3D nodes, you have to make sure that all the points connect and the mesh is closed up. And this, I think, is also an improvement in the quality of life and make sure your CSG shapes are working as expected. So this, I thought, was already being done behind the scenes, but it turns out that only now this has been implemented. So string names are faster than strings because they are stored in memory and reused Whenever you, you mention them again inside of the script, 
whereas only strings they are if you type three strings they will occupy three different memory slots whereas a string name only the same characters will occupy only one so yeah string names are faster and uh, here the string name dictionary keys are saved as it is so before they were being converted to string beforehand which means that any performance boost that i thought i had with string names you know, on the dictionaries was actually being converted to string so now they actually are being implemented and you can see here on the benchmarks that they are a little faster so yeah they took they take a little while to create but once they are generated whenever we read or fetch them they are a lot faster to be read so i think this is a, an improvement to any amount of code that you do with string names and using dictionaries so this is going to help a lot with big databases that uses dictionaries inside of godot like inventories and that kind of stuff that is going to improve the performance of your inventory it's rpg games like there's a, an improvement on the raycast normals and normal splitting angles whenever you are import geometry. So whenever you are generating LODs, but whenever you are using LOD generation, we can see that they have improved by disabling the normal raycaster for LOD and they are using a different type of algorithm. And you can see here some of the examples. So on the, the left side is the new behavior, which is with the raycast turned off. And on the right side is the current behavior with the recast turned on. The left one is the new one and the right one is the old one. And you can see the LODs mess a lot. The, the shading stuff. So as you can see, the left one always preserve a little more quality on the shading things. And also some of the geometry is a little better on the left side. You can see here some weird shading noises that doesn't happen with this one. It keeps the smooth shading very much close to it so this is for LOD generation basically whenever your mesh sticks far away from the camera they get turned to LOD versions so they can run faster and whenever the objects are very far from the camera you don't even notice this low level of quality and as you can see here is a more example you can see on the face here the shadows work as expected here we have a bunch of mess because of the normals are being generated wrong here because of the raycast operation that they talked about on this PR and here we can see the differences as well the left one always shows us better versions so i think this pr was very well worth it and our lods now we're is going to get a little more better shading so yeah this is also quite important because lod is basically used for every single 3d project so yeah good stuff names of the imported blend shapes and animation libraries now are going to strip some special characters that they basically break the animation the animation player so basically some characters were breaking up the animation and nodes and they decided to split them off whenever they imported and here are the list of the characters and these are now removed from the name. Also there's a big change here regarding the navigation baking on the navigation mesh. Now the navigation mesh also parses collision shapes by default. This was not the case before, you had to work with meshes and collisions with different behaviors and now it's default. So whenever you use collision shapes and in the world, they will also be used for to parse the navigation mesh. So this is very much important and I had some issues with this because I made some walls on the terrain and the terrain only got, got parsed on the collision on the navigation mesh generation and the units were trying to get inside of a wall that had a big block of a collision shape. So now by default, the collision space of the collision shapes are going to be used to bake the navigation mesh. So this is also a big improvement to the navigation mesh baking. Now let's talk a bit about the other features, the other big features that I think are very much well worth mentioning. Some of them I already mentioned, like the look at modifier, but look at this one. We have the spring bond simulator, which you can see the effect on the GIF here. As you can see, you can now use some the a spring behavior for bones, and we have now a node that does that. So this can be used i think to make vegetation some special type of cloth hair maybe chains flags a lot of stuff can be done with this and these type of effects you can it's very hard for to simulate through code so whenever they implement this type of graphical features in using animation and bones i think it's always welcome and here we can see the properties of it and here's some examples so yeah Pretty cool stuff you can do with this. So here is chains being simulated and here we can see the bones. So you can do this through code, but it will not be optimized. Oh, and as you can see, it's following the restraints 
whereas this chain does not rotate and this one rotates whenever they change because the chain does not rotate this side. So as you can see, there are also limitations we can do. So yeah, we can do cables, machines with this. This is going to help us a lot into make this type of effect. So now you can also load wave files during runtime, which is pretty useful for non-game applications such as music editors or our audio file editors. Now we can basically have the main functionality of importing audio during runtime. Editor, of course, is going to highlight the embedded running test game on the window. And as you can see, you can select things inside of the window. So this was presented on the previous PR, but was not implemented yet. Whereas now on beta one, they are actually implementing the embedded window. Now it should be working. And I already tested this on the new project and I think it looks pretty cool to use the embedded window. This I already mentioned, which is basically using Raycast to position objects. Basically they highlight some of the things that I already did because they were quite important, like the export to bots and annotations, import, process on has been improved with the texture detection which is also pretty cool navigation code has been cleaned up a lot and there's also some quality of life improvements and some changes like the navigation links now jode physics engine is now recognized by Gudio as the main engine and i think they will with time replace the previous Gudio physics engine i don't know about that but i think that's the thing that they want to do for now it's going to be a option but on future releases i think they're going to replace the entire physics engine with the jolt physics the interpolation thing which i also highlighted on the previous video so yeah there has been a lot of changes and uh, those were the ones that i chose to highlight so while i did not finish the video the tutorial about the aab collisions and a balding boxes i wanted to talk about the release of this video version so if you did not you should also update and run inside your projects to see the changes that it brought i think they are quite useful and exciting new things so thank you guys for watching hope you find this video useful and stay tuned for the next tutorial which is going to be about aabb bounding boxes and collisions so thank you guys for watching and i see you on the next one